JSX is one of those terms you will see everywhere in React. So it's crucial to understand what JSX is, why we use it, and how it actually works. JSX is a syntax extension for JavaScript that lets us write markup that looks similar to HTML, but with the full power of JavaScript behind it. Now you might wonder, why mix markup with JavaScript? Why not keep them separate like we used to? Well, here's how web development has evolved. For years, we kept our HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in separate files. HTML for content, CSS for styling, JavaScript for behavior. But as websites became more interactive, JavaScript started controlling more and more of what appeared on screen. The logic was determining the content. So React took a different approach. Instead of separating by technology, React separates by concerns, by components. Each component contains both the markup and the logic it needs. Think about it. A button's appearance and what happens when you click it are closely related. If they're in the same component, they stay in sync. And here's the thing. JSX makes our code so much more readable than the alternative. To show you exactly what I mean, we will create the same component with and without JSX, so you can see firsthand how JSX translates to regular JavaScript and why it's so much better. Back in VS Code, first, let me create a new component file called hello.jsx. And this is within the source folder. I will start with the JSX version of this component. Export, const, hello, and this is equal to an arrow function. We return a div tag with an h1, hello, wish was. On the outer div tag, I will add id is equal to container. I have automatic formatting on save with prettier and VS code, so the code looks much cleaner. Our hello component is ready. Back in app.jsx, let's import and use it. Import within curly braces, hello, from dot slash hello, and we will replace the h1 tag in the app component. Hello, opening and self-closing tags. Save both the files and check the browser. You should see hello Vishwas with the h1 styling. So this is our JSX version. Now let's rewrite this component without using JSX. Right below the existing hello component, we will add a new component called hello without JSX. Export const hello without JSX. And this is equal to an arrow function. To define a component without using JSX, React provides a method called create element. So return react dot create element. You will see an ESLint error that React is not defined. To fix this, we need to import React from React at the top. Perfect. Now this create element method needs at least three arguments. The HTML element to be rendered as a string, any properties or attributes for that element or null if there aren't any, and finally, the children of that element. So for our div element with the id attribute, let's fill in these parameters. The HTML element is div. The attributes is an object with the id attribute set to container. And the children of that element is the text hello Vishwas. Now let's import and use hello without JSX component in app.jsx. Import hello comma, hello without JSX from dot slash hello, and invoke the component. Save the file and check the browser. You will see hello Vishwas, but if we inspect the element, you will notice the h1 tag around hello Vishwas is missing. Right now, hello Vishwas is just the text inside the div. Let's try to add the h1. So back in hello.jsx, we know the first argument is the HTML element, so div. The second argument is for the attributes or properties, so id container. And third argument is for the children. If we wrap hello Vishwas with h1, save the file, and take a look at the browser, you will see h1 is displayed on the screen. 
So that's not working. Let's instead specify each one as another argument. So both each one and hello Vishwas are children. Save the file. And we can see this is not right either. Both each one and hello Vishwas are just text nodes inside the div element. React thinks we want to display the text h1, not create the h1 element. To actually create an h1 element, we need to call create element again. So the third argument, we pass another create element call. So react dot create element. And we create the h1 element with the text hello Vishwas. So the first argument is the HTML element h1. We don't have any attributes. So this is going to be null and the text is hello Vishwas. Now, if we save the file and check the browser, perfect. We have the same output as our JSX version. Let me explain what's happening. The inner react.createElement call creates the h1 element with the text. This entire h1 element then becomes the child of the outer div element. The second attribute is where you specify the attributes for the element. In our case, id set to container for the outer div and no attributes for the h1 element. So with JSX, without JSX. Let's look at one more example, but this time a little more complicated to really see the difference. I'm going to create a new file called card.jsx and paste the code for both scenarios. First is the JSX version. We're exporting a component called card and we're using the arrow function syntax. The card component returns a div with ID of card and h2 with the text welcome, a paragraph with the text. This is a paragraph with text with a span tag with an ID of highlight. And finally, a button with the text click me. And here is the version without JSX. First, let me import react from react and then paste the component code. You can see how quickly it becomes hard to read. Each element needs its own create element call. And look at the paragraph. We need to split the text into three parts just to nest a span tag. The nesting gets confusing and the code just doesn't flow naturally. This example has only five elements. So imagine a component with 20 or 30 elements. It would be a nightmare to read. That is why JSX exists. It is syntactic sugar. A tool called a transpiler automatically converts all your JSX into create element calls. You write clean HTML like syntax and React gets the create element calls it needs. That is a win-win situation. But here's the thing, since JSX isn't exactly HTML, it comes with its own rules and some special features that make it even more powerful. Let's explore those differences and learn how to write JSX properly. That's coming up next.